children shouldn't, shouldn't be using cell phones, period. I mean, there's enough studies out there that point out the possible adverse health effects to children that any, any parent who loves his uh, uh, or her son or daughter would not in any way expose them to the use of a cell phone. Just, you know, but we need to let the public know about these studies. When I was compiling my list of dumb ideas politicians have about science, I came across what I thought at first was a worthy contender, Denis Kucinich and his claim that cell phones cause brain cancer. Well, as you've noticed, he didn't actually make that claim, which is why he didn't make the list. But was he being alarmist in calling for an investigation and telling people to keep their kids away from cell phones? Just how dangerous are cell phones and how exactly do they give you brain cancer, doctor? It's essentially cooking the brain. So my cell phone is cooking my brain, essentially, which is rather odd because normally when you cook brains you have to heat them up to the point where the proteins break down. But OK, how does my tiny cell phone manage to do this? Over to you, Doctor. Well, if you hold a phone directly to your head, you're basically microwaving the head because that's the same su signal strength. Well, if it's basically the same signal strength as a microwave oven, then yes, it must be basically cooking my brain because that's what microwaves do. They energise water molecules and heat up anything that contains water, like brains or eggs, and they keep heating it until eventually... <laughs> So never mind whether my cell phone will give me a tumour in 10 years' time. If a cell phone signal has the same strength as a microwave oven and it's cooking my brain, then I've got more immediate problems to deal with, like having my brain turned into an omelette after just 10 minutes on the phone. But of course it doesn't turn into an omelette, so there must be something wrong with this cooking the brain idea. And it's pretty obvious what it is. That's the same su signal strength. No, it's not the same strength as a microwave. That should be obvious just by checking the capacity of your mobile phone battery. Mine's only 10.5 watt-hours. If this tiny battery did have enough capacity to power a microwave oven for several hours, then we'd have the answer to the energy storage problem. The average mobile phone is giving out about 0.75 to 1 watt of power. That compares to over 700 watts for most microwave ovens. In other words, microwave ovens are around a thousand times more powerful than a mobile phone. So while a microwave oven is powerful enough to bring the temperature of food up to 100 degrees and cook it, the best cell phone radiation can do is warm your brain by a fraction of a degree, and a bit of warming never hurt anyone. This is something that happens every time you put on a hat. When the brain's temperature does rise by a fraction of a degree when you put on a hat, blood circulation cools it down again and keeps the brain at an even temperature. So instead of saying warming, which wouldn't worry anyone, this doctor prefers to use the word heating. And see if you can spot how quickly he goes from heating to cooking. Vibrating the water molecules in your brain, and it could potentially be heating, cooking the brain over time. So let's look at the science rather than the hype. First of all, there are two types of electromagnetic radiation. There's ionising radiation, like ultraviolet, that can give you melanomas and skin cancer, and X-rays and gamma rays. These types of shortwave radiation break molecules apart. So there's no doubt that radiation at this end of the spectrum is dangerous. But at the other end of the spectrum, that's where we find longer wave radiations like microwaves. They don't break molecules apart, they just give them energy. In other words, warm them up, as we've seen. So there's no physical reason why mobile phones should cause cancer, and the claim that they cook your brain is hyperbolic nonsense. But since millions of people use them, we have to be sure. We need studies. And that's where there's a problem. Because you can't strap thousands of people to bench tops and bombard them with electromagnetic radiation and keep them away from all other variables for the next 20 years to see what the effect is. That's why of all the different types of research, medical research on humans is the one most fraught with problems. So medical researchers have to see what the effect is on animals or tissue samples, or they have to look at large samples of people living normal lives and see if they can spot statistical anomalies that might suggest A causes B. What you can't do is what Russia Today did. 
find one person who has a brain tumour and jump to the conclusion that he got the tumour because he used a cell phone. Alan suffered serious memory loss after years of using a mobile. But Alan probably suffered memory loss after years of wearing a necktie. If we're going to draw medical conclusions from random anecdotal cases, then we can make up any conclusion we like. John got a toe infection after years of eating beef sandwiches. Mary suffered lockjaw after years of drinking orange juice. Michael lost the will to live after years of watching Adam Sandler movies. Oh, OK, maybe there's something in that last one. But what we need, RT, are proper studies. Independent scientists, meanwhile, overwhelmingly find the most serious problems, from DNA damage, three times lower sperm counts, 290% more brain tumours, autism and birth defects. Autism? I thought conspiracy theorists say that's caused by vaccines. But anyway, is there any science to back all that up? As always, we have to check Russia Today's sources. And unfortunately, they don't give any. Just saying something like, the University of Washington, isn't enough. We need to know the title of the paper and the date of publication. But my guess is that RT is referring to this 1995 paper by Lai and Singh, which comes from the University of Washington and has been cited a number of times as evidence for a link. And this falls into one category of research, research on animals. The researchers found that just a two-hour exposure to low-level microwave radiation caused breaks in DNA in rats, and they cited other research that found breaks in DNA can be carcinogenic. The problem is that research is over 20 years old, and nearly all the other studies on animals find no effect. In vitro experiments, that's working on tissue samples, haven't fared any better. According to a 2011 paper in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute in the USA, there have been negative findings from virtually all experimental animal and in vitro studies. The National Cancer Institute itself concludes, in animal studies, cell phone use has not been found to cause cancer or to enhance the cancer-causing effect of known chemical carcinogens. Then an animal study burst onto the scene in 2016 that changed everything. A major U.S. government study on rats finds a link between cell phones and cancer, an explosive development in the long-running debate over the health effects of mobile phones. The study was called Game Changing, according to Mother Jones. The Wall Street Journal, the Daily Mail and other media were convinced that a link had now been found. Natural news went even further. After decades of denials and attacks by the media which called people concerned about cell phone radiation tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists, a massive multi-year study funded by the federal government now concludes that, yes, cell phone radiation causes brain cancer! <sighs> <sighs> hmm. But what did the study actually show? Well, it showed that tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists don't know how to read a scientific paper. They put um, mice and rats into these specially designed chambers where they could expose them at different intervals of uh, RF energy, which is the kind of energy that comes off of cell phones. The, the results were only released from the rat portion of the study. We don't know what the impacts were on the mice. But they, they were in these chambers. Uh, they were exposed in on-off intervals of 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off for 18 hours a day for a total of nine hours of exposure a day for about two years. To the same day. level of cell phone radiation that a human would be exposed. No, nine hours a day, seven days a week is a lot more than most cell phone users are exposed to. But anyway, let's look at the study itself rather than the media hype. The study wasn't published in a respected peer-reviewed journal. It was posted online, so it hadn't been adjusted for peer review. The only way you can find out what the peer reviewers thought is to scroll right down to the end of the paper where their conclusions are tacked on. And they're very revealing. Several reviewers pointed out that the tumours were mostly found in the male rats, but not the female rats, so the study could just as easily have concluded that it's safe for women to use cell phones but not men. And even in the male rats, one reviewer concludes that there's better evidence for carcinogenic effects in the heart rather than the brain. Another pointed out that the rate of tumour in the control group was far lower than normal. The inference is that it may not be the male rats subjected to RF radiation that are getting more tumours than normal. It's more likely that the control group are getting fewer. One bizarre result of the study was that the rats that were exposed to microwave radiation lived longer than those that weren't. 
In short, this study was neither game-changing, nor did it definitively show that mobile phones are linked to cancer. It's interesting that in reporting a possible link, the conclusions become more assured the further down the news feeding chain you go. Respected scientific magazines like New Scientist and Science urged caution. Most news media put a possibly or a maybe in with the link. But when we get down to the tabloids, the Daily Mail assumed this was a certainty. And when you get to the bottom feeders, the bloggers, they not only saw this as absolute proof, they also saw it as a slap in the face for all those who weren't on board the conspiracy train. This is rigorous science, said Natural News, and it shows a clear dose-related causative link between exposure to cell phone radiation and the development of brain and heart tumours. For decades, the government has actively conspired with industry to downplay any evidence linking cell phones to cancer. The entire federal government, as it operates today, is little more than the science propaganda and marketing arm of private industry. Uh, uh. You know, Natural News might have more credibility if it hired a health correspondent with some training in this field rather than what's called a health ranger. And his reporting might benefit from actually reading the study rather than simply grabbing quotes from other media outlets that got the story wrong. OK, so animal studies didn't show any clear evidence that mobile phones cause cancer. But there is another way to find out. Do what's called a case control study. Look at a sample group of people who already have brain tumours and see how many use mobile phones and compare that with a representative group of people who don't have brain tumours. There are quite a few important studies. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but let me try to summarise. The figures, by the way, don't include controls. A 2008 study of 352 adolescents with brain tumours found no significant difference in brain tumours between those who used cell phones and those who didn't. A 2011 study of 6,420 people with different types of brain tumours also found no increased risk due to cell phone use. Only among very heavy cell phone users did the researchers conclude there was a possible risk of glioma, but this was inconclusive. A 2014 study of 1,500 patients did find an increased risk of two types of tumour, glioma and acoustic neuroma, for people who use cell phones for more than 30 minutes a day over 10 years. A 2013 study of 447 people found no link with brain tumours for average cell phone users, but it did find a link with the heaviest users. So the studies of existing brain cancer patients don't find an association with ordinary cell phone use, but some suggest there may be an association with heavy cell phone use. And finally, there's one more way of determining if there's a link, and that's to see if brain tumour rates have increased in the phone-using population since mobile phones came into popular use in the mid-1990s. Well, they haven't, at least according to the research. In Japan, researchers looked at 7,000 people in their 20s and 30s. If mobile phone use did cause brain cancer, then the older participants should have a higher rate of cancer than the younger ones, because they would have used mobile phones over a longer period of time. In women, there was a slight increase, and in men, the association was the opposite. Neither was statistically significant. And there didn't seem to be an association between brain cancer and heavy use. Same with the 2016 study in Australia and a 2011 Danish cohort study of 420,000 people, although that study has been criticised for excluding business people who would be among the heaviest mobile phone users. In the United States, brain cancer rates have even been in decline since cell phones came into popular use, and although they've increased in the United Kingdom over the last 30 years, most of that increase occurred before mobile phones became popular, and since then they've been more or less flat. Of course, it's possible that it takes more than 20 years for any cancer to manifest itself, but epidemiologists would expect at least some cases to start showing up before then, and nothing's showing up so far. So the research is fairly clear using three separate methods. There is a possibility that heavy phone use might cause cancer, but most of the evidence shows no such link to any kind of phone use. That's why nearly every major organisation involved in this field says there's no evidence of a link. The US Food and Drug Administration, the Federal Communications Commission, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the European Commission's Scientific Committee on Emerging and Newly Identified Health Risks, 
or X Kenny here to give it its short name, all say studies have failed to show a link between cell phones and cancer. But most do suggest that further research is needed, just to be sure. Only one relevant body has put cell phones on its list of possible carcinogens, and that's the United Nations International Agency for Research on Cancer. It's part of the World Health Organization. But it's more a precautionary stance than the result of any definitive study. But that didn't stop the media hype when the IARC classification was announced. According to the WHO, dialing your cell phone could be like punching in a cook time and holding a microwave to your head. No, that's so not what the WHO brain, said at all. It's vibrating the water molecules. Oh, not again. In your brain. Independent scientists, meanwhile, overwhelmingly find the most serious problems. Yet, researchers are not overwhelmingly finding problems, they're overwhelmingly finding no problems. What Russia today has done is what the media always do when they go on a crusade, which is to cherry-pick only those studies that show a possible link, turn that into a definite link, and then ignore the overwhelming majority of studies that show no link at all. And, of course, quote one or two scientists who support the crusade and ignore the majority of researchers whose conclusions don't fit. We've seen a few examples, but here's another one. In 2016, there were headlines in The Times and The Daily Mirror, Men who keep mobile phones in their trouser pockets risk their sperm being cooked, worrying research has claimed. But even in the story itself, there's a clue that this claim may be nonsense. The Daily Mirror tells us that only 106 people were tested, which is not likely to give a statistically significant result. And when you read the paper itself, sure enough, it doesn't reflect the media's bold claims. Even the title of the paper should be a clue. Habits of cell phone use and sperm quality. Does it warrant attention? Even the authors aren't suggesting that their results show a link between mobile phones and low sperm count, only that it's an area that should be investigated with a proper study of more than just 106 people. The bottom line is that there may possibly be a link between cancer and heavy cell phone use, but the fact is that there's no known mechanism for such a link, and most studies don't show any such link. So by all means, let researchers keep studying the problem, but let's stop swallowing all the media hype and the blogosphere bullshit and follow the science. If you're worried, then use an earpiece. That freaks me out because I don't want cancer. Having said all that, it's important to note that mobile phones are dangerous, and numerous peer-reviewed studies have shown that they can kill you. Though they're not going to cook your brain or bake your sperm. These are studies that show people have been killed and seriously injured by using their mobile phones while driving. In the UK, the Department of Transport says that in 2012, distraction due to mobile phones caused 17 deaths in car crashes. The National Safety Council in the USA reports that cell phones were involved in 350 fatal car crashes in 2011. Yet if you believe the blogosphere, we seem to be more worried about a phony danger than a real one. Now be honest, before you watch this video, how many of you were a little concerned that your cell phone might give you brain cancer? And how many of you have talked on the phone or texted while driving? Uh, to be honest, before I check the facts, me too. We are a strange species.